state by state, city by city, they're stepping up. We have kind of become a hub for all kinds of uh, relief efforts here in the Washington area. Over in Washington, Illinois, possibly the hardest hit area, Pastor Casey Taylor says the volunteer response is overwhelming. His church has been transformed into a makeshift shelter as residents come to terms with the aftermath. God is with us in this mess. Uh, I know it can be hard for people to to understand where God is in all of this. Volunteers know a difficult road lies ahead for victims, both mentally and physically. Now we're into winter, and it, you know, it won't be long that snow will start, start flying, and people aren't going to be able to rebuild their houses. Two hours east in Gifford, Illinois, the road is just as tough. When I saw all the dump trucks lined up, they were almost lined up from Gifford to Goryville, and that just it broke me then. Beverly Hyden's home was one of 40 in the small town destroyed by the tornado. Out of the wreckage, however, a small glimmer of hope, a wagon wheel found in a nearby field filled with meaning. We've taken family pictures with it. It's just been part of our family. It was way out there. That will make my daughter very, very, very happy. Several eastern Iowans are making the difference for residents like Hyden. Retirees Ann and Ken Opatz made the long trip from Lisbon to help with relief efforts and pass out meals. We decided several years ago that uh, a good way to spend our retirement would be um, helping other people. Making their way from neighborhood to neighborhood, they soon realized that providing disaster relief can be as simple as a cup of coffee. It's the little things that we do to, to help them because they need a lot of help. Just off in the distance, we can see the flashing lights of utility trucks from all over the area. They're working frantically and hard through the night to get the power going back in the area. They should have it back up sometime soon. We're reporting in Gifford. Jason Hackett, CBS2 News, 10 at 10.